Welcome to part 16 of this video series. Today we're going to be discussing powering your small liveaboard boat. And thank you for supporting the creation of this video series. If you haven't done so already, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos in this series. Okay, so unless you never plan on moving anywhere, which admittedly a lot of people choose to do, and it's more common where winter is mild, but I have seen people do it even in harsh winters. They use a boat as a floating home more than a boat to go places. I have even met one gentleman in my journeys that had built himself a houseboat, had it permanently anchored in a private bay, and used a small runabout as his dinghy. And then he used the runabout to tow the houseboat if he needed to reposition it to a different spot. Now, that's him. But for the rest of us who do travel on their boat, whether it's just out for the day or permanently moving, you need some form of method to move your boat. These can first be broken down into two very basic categories, either power or sail. And then there's both, there's lots of types of both. I'm going to quickly first talk about sailboats. Sailing is a fun way to spend the day and the basics can be learned in a single afternoon. If you're looking to cross a great distance across a large body of water, then there's nothing better. However, having said that, there's a line that says sailboats still spend 80% of their time under power and 20% under sail. Yes, most liveaboard sailboats still have motors, giving them the best of both worlds. And if you do break down, you can always use the, uh, the other. For example, if your motor breaks down, you can still sail to shore or to a marina. As for the cost, it depends on what type of sailor you are. There are those who will buy the best equipment and even cut the handle off their toothbrush to reduce weight to go just a hair faster. And then there's those more relaxed sailors who will use what they have and don't care about the extra speed. And lastly, there's the hybrids or the lazy sailors. These are the types who mostly travel under power and just unfurl a head sail for a little extra speed and fuel savings. Speaking of fuel, sailboats normally have a fairly small engine and low hull speed, giving them some of the best fuel economy out there. Their engines can be inboards, outboards, gas or diesel, or even have an electric drive these days. If you're planning on doing a lot of traveling, then there's nothing better currently than a diesel. Diesel engines tend to be more durable and last longer than gasoline engines, with minimal required maintenance. Diesel engines also have fewer components than gas engines. Diesels pack more energy into a small area, which can make it more efficient and more economical in terms of fuel efficiency. Overall, diesel fuel supplies about 15% more energy than gasoline. That translates to up to a 30% better fuel economy than a gasoline engine. Having said that, if you want an outboard, then for the most part, you're out of luck. It's pretty rare to find a diesel outboard. Gasoline or petrol engines are lighter and cheaper than diesel. 99% of all outboards are gasoline. In some areas, buying gasoline and finding gasoline mechanics are simply a lot easier. Gasoline engines do require more maintenance. Cabin cruisers that are designed to get up on a plane normally use gasoline engines. In fact, it's not uncommon to see them with two large gasoline engines. For example, two Mercruiser 454s, which will give you a combined horsepower of 770. This is fun and fast, but you can imagine they require very large fuel tanks for the extreme amount of fuel they consume. Also, very few people cruise at high speed. The pounding can really seriously jangle your nerves after a full day of traveling. Most rarely cruise more than nine knots or 10 miles an hour. In fact, where I live is on a waterway that has a speed limit of 5.5 knots, which is just a little over six miles per hour in many of its sections. Most long distance cruisers use either sailboats or trawlers. Both have displacement hulls designed to travel at slower speeds. As for which is better, outboards or inboards, both have their advantages and disadvantages. Inboards take up a lot of interior storage space. They cost more initially and you cannot take them to a mechanic. You have to have a mechanic come to you, which can be expensive. But that's where the disadvantages end. From a liveaboard point of view, there's a lot of advantages to having an inboard engine, either gasoline or diesel. You can attach things like heat exchangers for heat or hot water, larger alternators for more electricity. Plus for the do-it-yourselfer or a backyard mechanic, they're a lot easier to access and work on. Inboard gasoline motors generally last longer than their outboard counterparts. You can squeeze roughly 1500 hours out of an inboard before necessary maintenance. Outboards on the other hand, last about 750 hours on average. So the inboard option means less maintenance, nearly half, even though they cost more initially. Also having an inboard means your propeller is better located. Quick story. The first time I sailed south was crossing from Manhattan to Point Pleasant, New Jersey. I was on a 32 foot boat with a 25 inch long shaft outboard. 
It was a rough crossing with pretty big waves. The problem was, every time we went over the crest of the wave, the propeller would come right out of the water, causing the motor to scream with extremely high RPMs. Then the entire motor, including the head, would dunk under the water whenever it went through the trough of the wave. I have no clue to this day how that motor survived. There's also inboard outboards, or IOs. These are a hybrid between an inboard and outboard, but you usually only see these on small runabouts and speedboats. Rarely would you ever find one on a liveaboard boat. After you've decided whether to get an inboard or outboard gasoline engine, you have to decide between a two-stroke or a four-stroke. Four-strokes cost quite a bit more than a two-stroke, but they are better for the environment, have better fuel economy, and are much quieter. The advantages of a two-stroke are simply that they're lighter, more reliable, and more economical to purchase. There are a lot of used two-strokes on the market, and this is because a lot of states and countries are either outlawing the sale of two-strokes or outlawing the use of them completely. And this is mostly for environmental reasons. If you ever see a boat with a big cloud of blue smoke behind them, chances are it's a two-stroke. Plus, some of the fuel escapes the combustion chamber and comes out directly into the water via the exhaust. I cannot recommend anyone in this day and age to get one. Electric drives are starting to become popular. These are great because they're quiet and don't have any exhaust, which makes them great for the environment. The problem is the price and weight of the battery, also your options for recharging them. If you live in a marina with full-time shore power, you could charge your batteries. That way you can go for short cruises without ever having to buy gas. You can still add things like solar panels, wind generators, or even water generators on sailboats to extend how far you can travel. There are even boats with enough solar panels they can go virtually forever, but it require a lot of roof space to place those panels on. So this concept rarely works on a small boat. Not to mention the initial cost is extremely high. You can buy a lot of years worth of fuel for the same price. Batteries are one of the high costs of an electric motor. Today, batteries are getting to be much better. They supply more power so you don't need as many and they last longer before you need to replace them than the traditional deep cycle lead acid battery. The problem with these new batteries is the initial cost. For example, a lithium battery can be up to 10 times as much as its lead acid counterpart. And even though they last longer before needing replacing, at some point you will still need to replace them. The next option is a hybrid. This concept is similar to cars or diesel electric trains. These use an electric drive which gets its power from the batteries or a generator to charge the batteries. Some have generators large enough to skip the batteries completely and run the motors directly off the generator. Some of the advantages of a hybrid setup with batteries is that you can run without the generator for short periods. You can use other forms to charge the batteries like shore power or solar to save fuel. You can even, if you're traveling for a long day, use the batteries for part of the day and the generator for the rest. In closing, whether you use an inboard, outboard, or even an electric hybrid, there are a lot of options from fairly cheap to extremely expensive. All you can do is figure out what would work best for your situation, do the research, and look at all the different options, and figure out what works best for you. If you have any thoughts or ideas about this subject, or ideas for future subjects that I have not covered, please let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. Thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video series on living on board a small boat. If you have, then please subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Also, I included links to past videos in the description below.